organizer stressed that Glasnost has not yet broken down east-west prejudice, which was a polite way of warning the capitalist caravan to behave itself. Moscow's souvenir industry certainly benefited from the exercise. Whether it achieved its aim of increasing mutual understanding is another question. The gigs have been uh, a bit strange, playing at the old ice rink with the refrigeration and all that, but uh, the food's been pretty disgusting. It was terrible. Rat meat, little bits of meat about that size. Horrible. Well, that's not going to be your main impression of Russia, though, is it? Uh, I'll tell you what, we've actually been too busy to actually see anything, really. This is like the first time we've actually been out in the square and seen the Kremlin and that, but it's been too hectic to actually see a lot of stuff. What about the music? What about the comparative bands who've been supporting you? I've never seen them. <laughs> I couldn't be asked watching them to tell you the truth. Yeah. Uh, they think that uh, big music of big countries uh, rather simple music and for it's music for common people. For common and normal people. It's a, a good commercial band. How popular is this group in, in the Soviet Union? Which group you mean? Big country. Not popular at all. <laughs> Why? Nobody knows it. Just nobody knows it. It's a very good group, but everybody. Thought when we, when I was trying to promote this group in this country, uh, everybody mm, thought that it's big, uh, the country music, because big country is mu too much country, you know, and country music is not very popular in Soviet Union. That's why we uh, we decided to put one very popular Moscow group with them to the concert. <laughs> Even pop music has distinctive Soviet values. Their bands are saying something different from big country, but Moscow audiences understand both. So who cares about commercial or political exploitation? I don't think working in the music business you ever can avoid it completely. I think it's, uh, it would be a very um, naive, overly naive attitude to take. I think uh, we are very open and very straightforward about our work, however, and feel that that lets us rest our own consciences as easy as possible. We know from within the group that our motives for doing it were as pure as could be, and uh, and that's what lets us sleep easy at night. Does this mean that big country will now sell more records in the Soviet Union? The records are not available in the Soviet Union at all unless uh, through bootleg tapes, so it's done uh, purely as a gesture of, of friendship and, and warmth. And, and hopefully what it means is that it'll open things up not only for other bands to come in here and, and play out with the state organisation, but for Soviet bands to come and play in. in Western Europe as well. There are a few innocents abroad in the pop business. The concert may have been for charity. The spin-off keeps the band in the public eye. So look away, look away. Well, prejudices about lank-haired, shabby people with dead eyes shambling around the streets of Moscow were confirmed. The British media had arrived. The big press coverage in a, in a lot of ways has, has disturbed me. The way they have very set attitudes towards the Soviet Union. I think the band are trying to break down those attitudes and improve relations between the East and West. But a lot of the press, particularly from North America, still seem to still seem to have very set ideas. Give us peace, give us peace 